So today I'm going to give you my first non-bullshit honest review. Not sponsored in any way. This is uh, something I bought myself two years ago. And after using it, well, about a year and a half, not two years, but after using it for that time, I formulated an honest review where I'm going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly with this chair. But first, I'm going to go over a small history on why I got this chair in the first place. For those who only want the review, just use the video timeline to skip the history. The history. A few years back, during a hurricane, I think it was Hurricane Irma, but I can't be 100% sure, but it was like six, seven, eight years ago at this point. I'm not good with time. But I had to move a generator from the back porch, or no, so from the front porch all the way to the back porch, you know, the generator had been delivered, but it doesn't help me on the front porch, I needed it in the back porch where I could hook it up and power the house, because I'm going to tell you, during that storm we were without power for 10 days so we needed that genera ge generator desperately, so I needed to move it but I had no help so I did everything smart I could, no bending you know, I had to Left it off the ground, but I put it into a wheelbarrow and wheeled it around to the back. So far, so good. I got to the back, but the porch I was putting on was uh, even higher than the wheelbarrow. So again, I tried to pull it from the wheelbarrow onto the porch. No bending and doing very careful with my back. So far, so good, I thought. I, had it on the, I got it on the porch. I got it ready to go. I gassed it up. I'm right, and right when I started pulling the drawstring... I felt something happen in my back. It was the twist, the twist from the drawstring, ironically. Not moving the generator. Well, moving the generator might have caused an injury. And twisting might have made me feel it, but I can't be too sure. All I know is that as soon as I twisted that cord, I felt something, some fierce pain back there in my back. And, at, and since then, I've dealt with this. I can make a long video about my recovery and everything, but the TLDR is, uh... I didn't have insurance at the time. I didn't see a doctor. Instead, I just babied it and did everything I could. I treated it as a... herniated disc, because it probably was. And just took it easy and did physical therapy. And I barely... I didn't even get my full range of motion back for almost two years of physical therapy. Pokemon Go was my main physical therapy that actually probably gave me my ability to walk again, to be honest. But now that I, now I have full mobility, I have, ever since, I still have cryon or chronic sciatic nerve pinch pain, which is typical with a herniated disc, especially when it wasn't treated. So uh, anytime you're watching my stream or you're watching my videos, you see me constantly fidgeting, going like this and trying it comfortable. This is the reason. I've had to deal with this for years now. Because of this, I needed to take care of my back as much as possible, so I'm thinking, well, what's the best way to do that? I need to get a chair that can do that. So, I splurged and spent $1,000 to get a chair. It had a good coupon at the time. I had like $300 off, because normally the configured price is like $1,399. I configured it with the best options possible. And I've been using the chair ever since. You see me sitting in it right now with a blanket over it. And I'm going to explain the blanket in a minute. But that's part of my, my uh, band-aid fix to some of the problems with the chair. So this is the beginning of the review. For all those who skipped over the, the history of getting the chair in the first place. This is the Steelcase Leap. And I actually put in the configuring options I use, but they have different ones. So I did the four-way adjustable arms. I did the adjustable lumbar, which adds this thing right there, and that's going to be the focal point of my conversation. I actually used hardwood or, or hard floor wood or wheels because my room is hard floor. First, I'm going to go over the pros because the pros are deserved. The armrests are fantastic. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I still use the chair. The armrests go up and down and tilt side to side, so I'm able to perfectly align it so that my arms stay at a perfect 90 degree angle when I'm using the keyboard and mouse. That's huge for helping with my wrist, which has problems of its own, you know, I'm getting old and shit. But, uh... 
I, the armrests are saving grace of this chair. They are fantastic. Because of these armrests, I, ha I am able to avoid significant carpal tunnel or wrist bending issues, you know. This is huge when you spend hours a day on the computer. This is what's good about the chair. The wheels for uh, non-carpeted floors are also fantastic. This chair is able to move around, but not too much to where it's sliding because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not on carpet. You know, it's stationary unless I want to be moving. And it doesn't scuff up the floor or screw it up in any way because it's, the wheels are designed for, you know, a hard floor. And this thing slides forward and back, so I'm able to adjust it adequately with my rump to get a perfect, again, 90 degree right, right angle on my knees with my feet touching the floor. So I'm getting adequate ass support. Because one thing that's important about ass support is you don't actually want all your weight on your ass. Your leg, legs should be load balancing some of that weight. If you're not putting weight on your legs when you're sitting, you're sitting wrong. And then you're putting a lot of pressure on your butt, and then you're, starting, you're going to get butt pain. Which I still get because of the sciatica, but again, this is one of the good things with the chairs. It's, it's helping with, the, with uh, the sciatica in the butt region for me at least. But now I need to get into details of the problems with the chair. The lumbar support. It's a nice concept in theory. You can see it right here. There's a little thing. This slides from here all the way down to here. And then it adjusts, you know, where, where the pressure on the lumbar is pressed. Because not everyone's back is different. So you, need, you want to put, adjust this. So it's perfectly lined up with the small of your own back. So like for me, that's about seven notches from the bottom. Is where the perfect placement is. Which doesn't quite match where this image shows it, but you know, you get the idea. But it's it's a bar that goes from this side to this side. And it's like right in, if you can't see it, but it's inside a chair. It's basically a bar that slides up and down in this rigid area. And that's good in theory. But that's also where the design defect of this chair is, I believe. And I drew up some pictures to explain it. You know, I, I talk about the arms here. That's good. But here's a concept where the bar is like... It's inside the chair and it's going all the way across. But here's problem number one. The bar is about an inch thick. And you can feel it. So when you're expecting a lumbar to, look, or to work like this, where equal pressure is applied across the entire thing, that's not what happens with this chair. You feel this, where the bar is, you feel that pushing into, the, into your back. It actually feels like this. You can move it up and down, and this knob right here adjusts the intensity. Like, this is probably an exaggerated intensity, but like... If it's turned all the way down, it'd be more like... Well, I'm, I, I don't have a steady hand, so... It'll be like less pronounced if the bar is turned down. But nonetheless, it's always pushing on a singular point. Even now, I've gotten to the point where I turn the knob, I turn this knob all the way down because this is better than this. This would be ideal. Like I'm not getting the proper lumbar support with the bar turned all the way down. But I'm not having this bar digging into my back either. Like this is a flawed concept and this is where the design defect of the chair comes in. You can see that the bar clearly on here is uh the the size of this knob, that's the size of the bar. So the bar would be like from the top to the bottom of this knob, all the way across. And this makes it look smooth. I wish I could show you, but that camera is fixed in that monitor, so I can't actually move it. So that's why I'm not actually showing you with my own chair. But you can feel like if you look at this chair, it's... Here, let me take a new screenshot. Just so I could... Okay. Open that up. With my graphic program. You see the knob here and here. This is what the chair feels like. I'm not even kidding.
a bar right here pushing against your back. Yes, uh, as, you, as the bar pushes out, it also makes the fabric here and here, like, raise out. So, like, you're getting the most pressure here, and maybe you're getting an increase of pressure here and here. So, the, this, uh, it does push out this much lumbar. It does. But it's pushing it out like a pyramid, not like a... spherical uh, shape like it should be so like again i'm gonna use drawing here instead of something round like this it's more like something like this and i realize what that looks like get your mind on the gutter and that's 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 probably a little bit extreme it's more like this but like you get the idea. There's one spot on your back that's always digging into, no matter what, no matter how low you turn it, whether uh, you have it this far out or this far out, like with the knob cranked all the way out, you're getting some curvature at the top and the bottom, then you're giving this little line that's digging into one point on your back. And when you've got this, when you're trying to get a chair to help your back, it's not helping your back when you feel this line pressing pressure on the very spot you're trying to support properly. It's not good. And that is why I genuinely cannot recommend this chair for lumbar support. Now I will say this, and I've actually thought about trying to fix my own chair. Anyways, they have an option configure the chair so that bar does not exist i'm even thinking about this chair i might be able to make it better by pulling the bar out like if i can get in there if the chair could be configured without the bar then surely the bar is removable right like if i take the bar out i would lose the ability to turn the lumbar support up but i will also lose that bar applying pressure onto one of the most sensitive parts on the back like that's the one reason why you're seeing me literally... I'll, I'll lean forward a lot in this chair, and you're not supposed to. You're supposed to be having proper back support, you know, sitting upright in your chair. You'll see me like this a lot, or like this a lot. It's because I'm actually feeling better when I'm leaning away from that bar, pushing into my back. Like, straight up. This is a defect. And I get the concept. There was a good concept, you know. I mean, to make an adjustable lumbar, you have to do something, right? But to do it differently, I think they'd have to, like... Maybe have, like, multiple bars in there where they gradually get smaller. Like, maybe there's, like, a knob here, a smaller knob here, a smaller knob here. And you have to move all three of them. Like, you'd, like, move the knobs together. But the idea is you'd want to get the curvature to look like this. And not like this, where there's one po point that's just digging into your back. Like, I can't emphasize enough that if you're looking for proper lumbar support, this is not the chair for you. It is great chair in terms of the armrests. And the com I got a comment about their customer service and warranty. They have a lifetime warranty. If anything goes wrong with this chair for like... Lifetime has different meanings. I think for them, it's like 20 or 25 years or whatever. It's not actually like your lifetime. If I live to be like 92, I doubt they're still going to be fixing this chair for me. But anyways, it's, it's, some, it's something really ridiculous. It's a good warranty. If anything goes wrong with this chair at all, they will fix or replace it. I had a wheel. A wheel gets squeaky. And I emailed them about that. And they're like, oh, we'll send you a new wheel. No problem. Right away. It's in the mail. No their support and warranty is top notch. And they answer emails quickly. When I emailed them about the, the wheel, it was like that. I was thinking it was within hours. Not business days, like hours that I got a reply. But this and this right here is why I can't. Overall, I have to rate I actually rated the chair on their own on their website as a three out of five because I had to, I had to stress. That while it, it's causing problems for my back, it's significantly helping 
with my arms and wrists, which is also the reason I got this chair. I got it for two reasons, really, the back and the arms. And it's still good for the arms. And the back, I'm still trying to get, find creative ways to improve it. So, the blanket. The theory of the blanket, and it did help, it did help, was that if I put an additional layer of fabric over it, I could smooth the bump even just a little. And it works. It does smooth the bump just a little, just having a layer of fabric over it. I'm thinking about trying a thicker blanket next. You know, the more I can thicken up the fabric, maybe the lessen the impact of what's basically a fulcrum pushing on the lumbar support. That's why this chair is covered in an ugly ass blanket. Let's make it a nice looking chair that looks like this. <laughs> well, it's hard to show, but look like this. But, yeah. That's, I just want to talk about this chair because I'm sitting in it in every video. And in every video, I'm squirming in it. And now, you know why. That's my honest, no bullshit review of the steel case leap. I hope it was helpful to anyone considering this chair, whether they buy it or consider other products. And I have no opinion on other products. I have not tried a Herman Miller or any other expensive chair of similar design to know whether or not they have this lumbar support defect or if they found a more engineered way to solve it. I even be cons if you guys know chairs that ha are better, but also have like the stuff that's good about this chair, I'm happy to hear them. And I think another reason I still use this chair is because it was a thousand dollars. Like there's there's a level of a uh, waste to consider there. The idea of not using a, a chair that costs so much is ludicrous, <laughs> even though it's not perfect. But at the same time, it's better than the chair replaced. Because the chair replaced was a cheapie from Walmart that I couldn't even stay in. I was sitting in the chair and I was constantly sliding out of it. It was it was bad. For some reason, the way it was designed, I couldn't keep my ass in the chair to save my life. I was constantly sliding out of it like one of those cartoons where the cartoon character is like and slides out of a chair like liquid. That kept happening to me when I was in that chair. And that chair was causing me significant wrist and arm pain because I could never get a proper angle on the keyboard and mouse. So this chair is not all bad. I'm not giving it a one or a two. It's an honest three because these things, which I circled so many times, I screwed up the picture, but these things are good. This one thing in red is the only bad. And, if, and I would love to see this company even if they ever saw this review, look at this design and go, how can we fix this one problem? Because they would have the perfect chair if they did. But, yeah. That's all I gotta say about that. I hope you enjoy my first review video. I will review from time to time because I like to talk about stuff. And it's usually gonna be about tech. But this is an issue that is important to all people. Gamers, office jobs, and things alike. You know, this is one piece of tech that we all got to use. So this is my first review. Thanks for watching.